Hello and welcome to another video and in this one we are going to have a look at some of the new uh, functionality uh, that uh, has been added to story templates uh, since the last video I did which was some time ago now. Uh, so we're going to have a look at uh, some of the new stuff uh, that's been added. Uh, this video will by no means cover everything uh, but it'll be enough to uh, get you uh, started. So the main thing we'll be looking at really is um, recalling information uh, into a story template from a multi-column table. Uh, this is something that wasn't possible in the uh, original iteration of the story templates, uh, but a new functionality has been added which allows us to do this, and this opens up um, many more possibilities for creating story templates. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at a, a simple uh, story template in this case. And we're just going to look in this case at uh, race. Um, and it's a very simple table or a very simple template. All it's doing is calling a table called race. And if we open up our race table, um, we can see that it's a multi-column table. It's just got two simple columns. Uh, the first one uh, gives us uh, the uh, race with a capitalized uh, letter. And the second uh, gives us our race uh, without that. Um, so that this means that um, if you were constructing a sentence, obviously, which started with a human, then you would need a capital letter. If the uh, word, if you wanted the word to appear in the middle of a sentence, you don't want it to be capitalized. Now, previously, um, if you had rolled on this table, then you would just simply have gotten a, a result from the first column. If you'd wanted to roll a result from the second column, then you would have need to have specified that. And of course, that would have no relation to whatever was on the first column. So in, in effect, previously, you, you really couldn't uh, do very much with uh, multi-column tables uh, and set up something like this. But now you can, um, and simply rolling on this table is going to give us a result, uh, which will be either one, two, three, or four, and it will return all the elements uh, from the table, in no matter what column they're in, and it'll retain that column. So if we generate this table here, or generate this template here, what you can see is the result is halfling, halfling. So we've gotten a result of three, and it has returned both the first column and the uh, second column uh, of our table. So you can see that this is obviously immediately uh, very useful. Um, so let's take this a step further uh, and we'll have a look at another template, this time the gender template. Um, and if we have a open up our gender table, uh, we can see that we now have uh, six columns here. And we've got pretty much the same kind of thing. We've got male and female, um, but we've also included uh, a non-capitalized version. And we've also got all the various pronouns as well, um, so that we've got those capitalized and non-capitalized. Um, and that means that we can construct sentences um, with all of the possible variations of uh, he and his or her uh, and she. Uh, in sentences, and we can keep the uh, logic uh, of that. Previously, you just wouldn't have been able to uh, roll on this at all. Um, and we can see here that in, in our table, we've uh, generating the results here. And in order to get the result uh, from this role, this role here is just simply going to give us either a one or a two, and it's going to return all of these results on this call, on this line or on this line. Um, but we can recall these results, which is the important thing, uh, by including the uh, the call to the table in uh, hashes uh, along with our pipe to tell which column we want to uh, recover. So in this first result here, we're wanting to recall the first column uh, of the uh, gender, uh, the result that we're going to run. So I'll generate the table and we'll see this more clearly. So if we generate this, We've obviously rolled a one here, and it is now, uh, as you can see, it's given us all the columns from uh, the roll of one, and these are the results that we can recall. Uh, so uh, you can see that this is obviously going to be very useful for constructing all sorts of sentences. Um, now, one interesting thing that you can do here, which we can demonstrate, 
is that if you don't really want this uh, output here, uh, we can actually insert a query uh, before the uh, output, before the gender. And when we generate our table now, it doesn't actually output all the uh, columns in this line here. So we don't really need this portion. Um, we need, obviously, we need to call the table, but we don't need to um, have anything there to tell us that we've actually rolled on this table. It would be quite sufficient just to have the uh, gender with uh, in brackets and with the query icon, and there would be no output from that. But the output is stored, and you can still recall uh, the results. Uh, now, of course, there are still occasions where you're going to want to uh, just roll on a particular column. And so if we have a look at the address uh, story template here, um, what we've got is we've got three uh, articles of clothing. And if we want to open up our uh, dress table, um, and essentially we've just got uh, three columns and each of them has uh, some kind of descriptive te uh, text. Um, related to uh, those items. And so we just recall these uh, or we roll these uh, in the normal way. So if we uh, wanted uh, our waistcoat here, dress one is going to uh, roll uh, a result from table uh, from column one, uh, the leggings from column two, etc. And when we generate that, what we see is we get our results. So our waistcoat is going to be uh, rough woolen, our leggings are loose fitting. So it, when we uh, put in the pipe here, uh, when we want to actually recall something specific from a particular uh, column, then we specify uh, that column and just uh, do it in with the normal square brackets. Um, and we will get the uh, result uh, from just that column in that uh, table. Um, now, another interesting thing which uh, you can now do is to actually uh, define variables um, for uh, your story templates, and you can uh, put things into those variables. So if we have a look at the color story template here, and we have a look at our colors table, uh, we can see this is just a simple table and it's just a, a list of colors. Um, well, what we've got here is we have assigned or we want to assign a color to uh, this article of clothing, in this case, the waistcoat here. And the way we would do that is to um, enclose everything in our normal square brackets. But we uh, put the colors here in colons beginning and end. And what this is going to do is it's going to roll on the colors table and it is then going to assign a color to uh, this keyword here, waistcoat. So we can then uh, use waistcoat uh, as uh, our color. So we can see here when we recall this, the waistcoat color is we just put it in the normal angled brackets and this will come up with the color that we have defined by rolling on the colors table. So if we generate this table here, we can see that just simply rolling on the table gave us a white, which is of no relevance in this case. Um, but we have assigned yellow to the waistcoat and we've assigned green to the shoes. And so when we recall the waistcoat here is recalling the correct color as yellow. And when we recall the shoes here, the shoes are coming in at the color of uh, green. Uh, so again, this is uh, useful uh, for recalling things. And you can use this in, again and again in the text. Once this has been defined, then it stays in the database uh, and Fantasy Grounds knows uh, what that uh, variable is and you can recall it in a sentence. So let's put all this together then uh, with uh, our final story template, the uh, barkeep. Um, so this template here um, is going to give us a, a race and a gender. Um, it's then going to define uh, some uh, wear, a dress for a waistcoat, leggings and footwear. Uh, this is going to basically re recover the description. Uh, and then we've got an appearance table here. If I have a quick look at the appearance table, it's quite extensive. Um, we've got six columns. We've got 
and, and and you can have as many of these as you like. I th I believe that the limit is about twenty columns, but you can have as many entries in here uh, as you like. Um, but each of these um, is going to roll on this table simply. Is going to roll on the nose uh, column uh, on the appearance uh, column one, and it's going to return. Uh, one of these results and each of these skin eyes etc is going to return It's going to make a roll on each of these columns and we're going to get a different uh, thing from from each column here and then the colors we have defined uh, uh, various pieces of clothing uh, hair and eyes um, now of course you could have a different colors table i've been lazy here and just created one colors table so we're going to get some perhaps a bit weirdish results um, but at any rate this is just here to demonstrate how you can use a table to assign values uh, to different variables or assign variables to different values um, and then we've got our text and this is the thing that's actually going to appear so if we have a look at this, it says, you know, behind the bar stands A. Uh, and then we are going to uh, recover our appearance uh, uh, from column six of the appearance table, which is going to be uh, up here. And this is our stature uh, of our uh, character. And then we're going to uh, come up with uh, the gender uh, column two, and then also the column two of the uh, race. Uh, so our gender table, if we look at this, we're going to uh, either have male or female and our race is, is going to be the uh, lowercase version of our uh, race because we've got a middle in the middle of the sentence here. Um, and then we're going to go wearing a waistcoat. Uh, this is going to be the color of the waistcoat. And then uh, we're going to uh, recall the uh, dress one column uh, which will describe the waistcoat and then the similar thing for the uh, leggings and the shoes uh, and then in the second paragraph uh, we are going to have the appearance of the hair and this is going to be the color the hair part is going to be the color of the hair um, and then gender four is going to give us the uh, pronoun for gender four lowercase he or she um, and then uh, we've got the nose, the cheeks, etc., and the eye appearance as well. So let's generate this and we'll see. So this is the results here. We can obviously suppress. We could have suppressed all of this by putting a query uh, in front of this so that we don't get all of this. Um, but all of this text now, if we have a look at it, um, and it reads like a proper sentence. Behind the bar stands a thin female dwarf. Uh, she's wearing a bright red woolen waistcoat over bright red ragged woolen leggings and red polished shoes. Uh, under thick red hair, she has a narrow lipped mouth, flat nose and pale cheeks. A piercing green eye scans you up and down. Quite a lot of red was rolled there, but that's fine. It's actually worked out quite well. Um, so you can see that um, the power now behind the story templates and being able to roll and store information from multi-column tables is going to be able to generate uh, much more productive sentences uh, and it'll keep things like uh, genders and pronouns and all that kind of stuff um, uh, capitalized and all that kind of thing. Uh, you'll be able to construct um, quite uh, proper sentences uh, from the uh, new version of the story templates. Um, so as I say, we, we've kind of scratched the surface to some extent, but um, there's a lot of stuff in there which is uh, very good. There's a lot more of it, uh, which I haven't really looked at. And to be perfectly honest, um, I, I'm kind of lost as to what it actually uh, does, but I might have a look at it and do another video in the future. But at any rate, uh, that's it for this one. I hope you found that useful. Uh, thanks for watching and cheers for now.